Okay, guys, Kilitu Coast, welcome to the show. And uh, we finally arrived at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro at the Rongai Gate. And we are going to approach this mountain from the eastern side, the sunny side. We want to bring you the best visuals that we can. And uh, that's why we all, always want the sun on our backs. Let me go and show you. We have a nice model here that's been on display by Tanapa. And uh, it will give you a much better picture of what's going on. We are super excited. Thanks for watching the Serengeti Show Live. Now it's Kili to Coast time. And uh, wow, we are really excited. Wonderful weather, so we're really lucky. And uh, a little dust of snow on the mountain, so absolutely stunning. So as you can see here, uh, this uh, is a volcanic mountain. So um, the reason why Kilimanjaro is so high is it actually had a solid base that was created by two other volcanoes that is older than actually the Kibo or the main, main volcano. So you can see the Mawenzi on that side. So we're going to head to, to Mawenzi and do a lot of filming from the Mawenzi side and then sh show you the most beautiful peaks of, of Kibu. And then there's an older vol volcano, the Shira Plateau, which is the oldest of the three volcanoes. And uh, that one is, is uh, on the western side of the mountain. And then we're going to tackle the big guy over here. This is Kibo Peak. And the highest point on, on the Kibo volcano is Uhuru Peak, which is Freedom Peak. And uh, that's where we will want to show you some incredible views. We're super excited for this journey, guys. Stay tuned and uh, watch every episode. Pretty exciting stuff, man. of Kilimanjaro and uh, we have Rongai Ridge and we have just come through the rainforest zone and, and into the Heath and Moorland zone which is absolutely stunning to see how it changes as we go higher up. Um, so there's a, definitely a vertical change in vegetation over here. We're sitting next to the stream. Kilimanjaro is this huge volcano that erupted so we know that the geology in this area um, has been impacted so this is all lava st uh, flow and lava stone that's about two million two and a half million years ago and you can see how the glacier water or the water from the snow that's coming on the eastern side of the mountain this is not rainwater this is melted glacier and melted snow how it's carved all the way through this volcanic rock and it's a humbling experience we, we're looking at two and a half million years of water throw that has carved these these gullies um, into this very hard volcanic rock and it's just incredible vegetation we're getting into senecio and giant lobelia kind of vegetation loads of ericus you have those giant ericus that that grow and then uh, incredible little flowers even a, a endemic protea species here uh, protea kilimanjaro um, and what an incredible privilege to, to be on this mountain, this mountain that is a beacon of hope for so many people, that has created so much value for the people around the mountain. And this is a prime example of if we do look after something, how it can really, really help the people around a protected area. If we can just have enough people visiting, 
and enough value that's being created. So, guys, this Rongai route up the eastern side is, is absolutely spectacular. You always have the sun on your back and uh, spectacular views. It's a great wet season route and um, it's a humbling experience. And what a lovely day we have. And uh, we'll continue upwards and, uh, and show you how we go into more of the uh, moon landscape and uh, we'll lose vegetation as we go further up into the scree and then into the alpine zone. So what a journey, absolutely incredible. Super all safety time and uh, it's the night before the mountain so always a little bit nervous but uh, there's always a big question from people what do I pack for Kilimanjaro and really it's not an over complicated thing and you should spend more time on getting ready for the mountain and preparing for altitude than deciding what to pack so the less you bring the better and um, we always work from what is the most important to the least important. So um, we're going to start with your summit evening. So Kilimanjaro is a mountain where most of your days prior to the Sabbath e evening, very pleasant. You know, you, I walk the first few days in shorts, um, normal tracking things. But so you need to pack for two types of environments. One where um, it's warm and one where it can get really cold. So you have to be prepared for the really cold part first. And possibly being exposed to it, really being cold and windy and blizzard type conditions for an extended period of time. So you need to be ready for that. So let's start there. Um, your outer layer is the most important part. Um, what doesn't get through that, obviously, um, is, is great. So it needs to be wind and waterproof. And now we're talking um, an alpine type jacket, but something that is not too, not too thick. Um, la a rather layer than uh, have a really heavy jacket. So I, st I start with an outer layer, which is uh, a rain jacket and rain pants. So this is with me all the time. And this is also the, my outer layer for the summer evening. So this is wind and, and weatherproof. It's a thin jacket, um, but really good material. Um, so it keeps the wind and the water out. Uh, and similarly for, for your legs. Um, on the mountain, you need to work top and bottom. So whatever you do for the top, you need to do for, the, for your legs. But probably from a temperature point of view, one layer less on the legs so that's just um, a rule of thumb so when you're getting dressed um, whatever i say here today please bear in mind if you tend to be cold a cold person then take an extra layer and if you tend to be a warm person like i am then you stick to what i've got this is really enough and i always take one spare layer so you should really be fine all right so what do you what do you wear underneath um your your wind shell um that's where your layering starts so generally for the summer evening um you i take one extra fleece um that has a zip so important that this layer that you can open up so to regulate your temperature so the problem on mountains is when you are active and walking and busy you are really warm and then when you're stationary you really get cold quickly so you have to be able to regulate the, the temperature of your body. If you sweat, that would freeze, and then if you, uh, that will really make you cold. So you don't want to sweat. So you must be able to regulate. So that's a layer for me, and then we call uh, have like a base layer or a, th um, I don't know what you call these tight things, but um, it's the only place where I wear them. But the the first layer over your body is really what keeps the temperature in so if you can have a really good base layer thermal layer um, again both for for your legs and your uh, your upper body bear in mind that when you descend kilimanjaro it's going to be 
most probably during the day and you're going to get really warm so you must be able to take layers off um, and I have a day pack, a day pack with you so you can don't be lazy take those layers off otherwise you just really sweat on your way down all right um, so the jacket that you would probably use the most is a puffer um, this is what you would wear every evening on the way up the mountain at dinner and this is what you would wear in the mornings before you um, head out you would wear this perhaps the first hour of um, mornings higher up and then put it in your day pack so a puffer is probably your your handiest kind of item on the mountain so make sure you have a good puffer um, then your days leading up to base camp is really easy days and uh, quite pleasant enjoy them take pictures and really take it easy uh, for those days it's just normal hiking gear some guys prefer um, long pants and they can zip off if you really want to go through all of that exercise um, i generally start off just with my shorts um, i generally carry a little bit of uh, too much so i tend to be fairly warm you know i i hike in normal t-shirts um, it's better to have a collar so you don't get sunburned if you're coming from europe or in the northern hemisphere so you would start your day off in normal hiking pants uh, your puffer if you really need it low down and then your rain gear your rain gear stays with you all the time so wherever it rains you need to you stay there so that's um would generally be what you have with you and for day one to four or so um from base camp everything changes then you're getting ready for really a 16 hour type of day um and you would uh, have really variable temperatures on the day so important things to pack crampons and uh, this is just in the kind of rainy weather time but uh, this keeps you on frozen uh, snow so these are adjustable you can just strap them onto the bottom of your boots so i always take a pair of good crampons with me which is really awesome um, i take a pair of hiking uh, normal uh, trainers just for evenings coming to dinner and things like that when you get want to get out of your hiking boots so they're kind of really handy um, we'll get to some of things later a, a pair of decent boots that you've action before for your everyday hiking um, we'll show you what you do with with boots later on but as long as they're waterproof and warm and allow enough space for leather socks so don't buy boots too small um, they would be good and this is what you're going to spend every day in uh, socks we need to chat about socks but all the way to base camp you're going to just wear normal hiking socks that you wear on everyday hikes and then for your summit evening you're gonna have a couple of layers a small thin layer that you're going to have underneath and this is just reduces friction and then you're gonna have like uh, summit socks or something that can really take a bit of punch on the mountain you have two points that really gets cold when you when you're struggling and those are your fingertips uh, and your toes so you always keep them moving but if you if you have cold feet uh, consider a third pair of, of socks or, or two decent pairs and if you're not getting cold then, then this should be sufficient. Um, Gait is very important only for the summer evening so this is what you uh, strap over your uh, lower legs and this stops snow uh, and moisture get, getting into your boots so very important you can't climb kitty without these. Um, so that's pretty much it you need a couple of buffs i always take two uh, around your neck and to to uh, protect your mouth uh, from blizzard and, and extreme conditions and it just keeps it really warm uh, around your neck i always wrap some batteries and things in here so uh, i always take quite a few of these um you need to have a couple of water bottles at least uh, two liters or so and um, wide rim because they freeze up so the smaller the the hole uh, the quicker it would freeze the wider the rim 
um, the better so normal nail jeans or so and you're just carrying them upside down and then they don't really freeze up so um, all good for that and then guys Probably the most important thing for your summit evening is how to regulate, uh, keep your head warm and your hands warm. So uh, we spoke about toes early on, but uh, that's you're not going to take your boots off. But uh, very important uh, is a couple of beanies. I always take two because if you lose one, uh, these things go missing. Um, and. And yeah, very important to have them very handy with you. You spend half the time in a beanie, which is really cool. Um, perhaps a little bit more important is that you bring two layers of gloves. Um, you have a thin kind of layer that if you're a cold person, you will start wearing this lower down, uh, maybe in the evenings and things like that. But this is uh, your bottom layer for your summit evening. And then you would also make sure that your outer layer or your wind and uh, waterproof thick gloves have enough space to fit over your inner layer. So if your gloves are too tight, your fingers really get cold. So make sure there's enough space for both layers. And then guys, just uh, I'm not a big kind of I don't need a lot of medicine in my life, but painkillers mostly you would probably need uh, the day after you've come down from the summit. The less you medicate, the more we know about your symptoms. That's altitude related, but um, I always carry um, super dull little medical aid kit with me that's got everything, all the basics in there. Uh, in the evening, she will take a, a bucket shower, just a bit of warm water and just a little bit of a a wipe down so you don't need much from a toiletry point of view just a bit of a soap toothbrush uh, a little bit of baby powder just in case um, something goes wrong and you could always take um, eye drops eye drops are just should always be there most important thing um, then you will be spending some time on the mountain so something to read always good i'm busy with living the wildlife uh, check it out it's actually quite cool ian white then uh, there are a couple of practical things that you really need as you get to uh, to base camp you always need a head torch uh, you use these quite often so it takes spare batteries always good to take two uh, sets of spare batteries and they take like some of them take three so don't buy two batteries because they need three so get six six pairs plus a fresh a fresh set uh, i take a thing called zambak uh, for the lips it really gets uh, dry around your nose and your lips and uh, don't wipe it often because then you get bruised nose so zambak is really good for that um sunblock as Wazungu, we need uh, sunblock, you know, uh, you get sunburned if there's snow and glacier uh, from the bottom up. So the bottom of your of your nose and things like that, really uh, important to put sunblock there. This is uh, def uh, when you come down, you really get nailed by the sun. Uh, then I always take a little extra solar light uh, just for the evenings, you know, um, it really just helps. Uh, you to organize stuff and then you don't have to deplete your head torch that much so um, uh, free power solo which is really cool uh, then I take a demo box uh, this is just for some music or the boys need some motivation um, check it out really nice team of 40 hours of battery life so it lasts one kilo climb so really cool um, Normally I work a lot on the mountain, but uh, guys, if you come climb the mountain, the walking stick's really cool. You can lean on them, you can transfer weight onto them, and apparently it makes it 25% easier. So um, don't feel ashamed. Try a pair of these, or at least one of them, uh, and then you have an extra point of contact and more stability, you know. Altitude uh, sickness, lack of stability and balance, so these things help. So that's pretty much it, guys. Then you organize this pretty much in two bags. One bag that the porters would carry. That means that you only see this, these items back at camp. You're not walking next to your porter, your porter is walking away from you. Then you have a day pack. And the day pack uh, consists of all the items that you need with you 
throughout the day. So important in your day pack, uh, sunblock, sunglasses, uh, rain gear, the snacks that you need uh, for the day, if any, uh, and then your camera and things of personal nature uh, that you keep with you all the time. And then all your summit gear and, and your extra uh, pairs of underwear and things like that, uh, that goes in your main bag. Um, and maybe a bottle of something to keep you warm. Alright guys, so super little safety, that is uh, pretty much it um, for us. It's not a big deal guys, just get it into bags, get it here. And, uh, and later on we'll ch uh, really chat about all those extra tips on the mountain, you know, especially if you want to kind of uh, film your climb or do some amateur kind of things with sound. Um, so we'll chat about uh, that one in the next super old safety segment. Chat to you later guys. Welcome to Kids Corner guys and I just want to show you today why you need to gear up and get out because you can see lovely little chameleons like this and these little guys are amazing they can change from one color to another color and this is a beautiful baby one so you will see if it goes onto this other stick And if you watch closely, it will slowly become another color, just like the stick, so well camouflaged. It's a super cool little thing, these chameleons. They walk really slowly. It's big eyes, and their eyes can move in different directions. Try that a bit. Not easy. They have a long tongue. They eat flies and mosquitoes, so they are good to have around the house. But we're going to let this little guy go because he wants to get away and he wants to get into the shade. That's why you need to gear up and get out, guys. Watch Kid Corner again next time.